We played second time playing Michigan State. And obviously when you have an inexperienced, untested team like we have, um, that, that early barrage that we came out with, you know, sometimes that makes those guys think that it becomes a little bit easier. And, and in reality, it's never easy. Um, I think the best thing about Michigan State, the thing you guys should be most proud of, if you go back and look at 245 in the first half against Miami, and you run the clock from 245 to 159. So if you go set first half, Miami, NCAA tournament, 245 to 159, that completely demonstrates how powerful and how good this team is and why they have a chance to win the national championship. They miss a three. They all rebound from 29. They get the rebound, kick it out. Winston makes a three. They come down and make Miami take a 27-foot horrible, terrible shot. Get the rebound. One dribble, three passes. Ward gets a layup. And that is who they are. They're as fast as any team in America from baseline to baseline. They have as much length as any team I've seen when I was at Baylor in the Big 12 and when I was at Clemson in the ACC. They are long at all positions. And Jackson is such a puppy. He's going to learn so much. And the great thing is he doesn't have to worry about being a, the star or the man or the go-to because he's got enough of those other guys around him. So it's even going to make his growing faster because he's not going to be put in tough situations where he has to make plays. I think you guys play Kansas on Tuesday, I think, right? Is that you play? Duke, 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 Kansas, whatever. <laughs> Same thing. Um, I think it's going to end up being the two longest teams in America, right? Two tallest teams, maybe Duke and, and Michigan State. So you, you, you guys got a chance. We played them last time. They were fifth. Uh, when we played you with Adrian Payne and that group. And uh, this group, to me, the one thing I noticed about Miles Bridges that was really interesting is how well he coached the guys on the floor. And I think that's a credit to, to Coach. And I think that's a credit to him for a guy that has so much accolades and has so much attention to be put upon him that he continues to help the other guys get better in the right way. And it takes a special person. I know spiritually where he is, and I can see why he is that way because of where his heart is spiritually. So. Um, it, it's it's going to be a fun season for you guys. I'd start booking your tickets. The only thing, obviously, is is, is injury, and you always you always have to be whatever about injuries and how they affect you. But you're pretty deep too. I mean, Schilling was borderline a starter until he got hurt. Tum Tum, Lou Rawls, whatever you guys call him, he was he was a starter when you know when he came into this mix. I mean, they got they got some really really good depth as well too, which makes them even that much more dangerous. That's an opening statement, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys like to shoot the three, but what did you see about Michigan State's three-point defense tonight? That, that maybe that seemed like maybe an area they need to work on a little bit. Well, I, I think the one thing about when you play a team like us, when we got open looks and when we shared the ball and we moved it from side to side, we got whatever we wanted. When you have that many guys that can stretch the floor, it makes it that much easier. With them, they're so man-to-man, -man, they're so dominant with guys stopping the ball that when that guy gets an edge, that's when they try to break down. So, you know, that, that's what we tried to get into, those kind of scenarios, which isn't easy. And the other thing is, you know, foul trouble for you doesn't become as difficult as it does for us. So for you guys, you can even expend a little bit more and get out to the three a little bit more because you got a lot more rotations on the inside if they do get in foul trouble. So I, I really, when you look at this team, you say, what would be their weakness? Like when you watch them on film, which I did a lot, and when you know what they do, their, their weakness to me can only be themselves. The kryptonite that they have within themselves to be selfish or to, to get to a point where they're going to be, you know, instead of being selfless. And to me, that would be the only thing this team could do to, to implode because they're, they're too talented in all facets and they do the two fundamental things the greatest. They keep the ball in front of them and they rebound the ball. And then they push it down your throat as fast as they can. So God bless you when you're playing. Duke. Any other questions? Coach, okay. uh, 50 degrees difference in temperature, if that's what you're going to ask. Oh, well, we'd love for you guys to come down. Home and home. Um, home and home. <laughs> can, can, can you um, take what you did in the start of each half where you really were competitive and, and build on that and show your guys, you know, hey, we hung with this team? No. So I'm not a moral victory guy, but it's a great question. And uh, with this group that's inexperienced and untested, we just need to continue to help them grow through the fundamental areas that we've always been great at. And uh, some guys have been thrusted into some situations they've never been in before because they've never stepped foot on the floor. There's only two guys that started the game that never played a Division One basketball game before. So, you know, we can't say, well, if you, what we can say is when we shared the sugar, when we moved it from side to side, and when defensively we were in our principles, 
we were very good. So that, that I did share with them. But making shots early, I, I believe this. Early leads mean nothing unless you defend and rebound. And, and I think we were down 16 to 14. <laughs> so even though we were scoring, so were they. But that's a fair question. I appreciate you asking. One other question about what you guys did to slow them down on the break. It seemed like you guys were, after they were getting the rebound, challenging them and getting in their face. I haven't seen a lot of teams do that. We, we, we tried, one thing we tried to do is be aggressive on the ball. And we thought if we could make those guys make two extra dribbles, it'll give the extra guys a chance to get back. And then when they do pitch, at least we could be set. Instead of letting that guy be naked and just get it and go. And you, you're so good at one dribble pitch, one dribble pitch. And because, so we tried to make them take two, if not three dribbles, then we felt like we were in a good position to be back. We're not giving secrets away to Coach K, are we? All right, you guys good? Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach.